hope you're having a good one. So we're at a point with the uh, Ascent 18 here. Uh, felt like it was time to do an overview and get this thing out and actually put it to the test. Um, initially, when I got this thing, I had was of a mindset and had been of a mindset for more than a few years now. Minis have never been my thing. They just, they're too small, not capable enough. Um, I, I'm just, I'm a 10th scale guy. It's just how it is. Had a few minis in the past, but was so disappointed with them out of the box that I never did anything with them. Ran them once or twice, set them on the shelf, eventually get rid of them. So when I got this thing, before I ever even laid hands on it, I ordered a whole bunch of upgrade parts. That way I was forced to actually give this thing a chance. And uh, at least as of right now, I have finally gotten all of those parts and installed on here. Definitely was no easy feat. Um, Everything's so tiny on this thing. I've got big hands, uh, bad eyes, the whole nine. But after a few pretty decent hurdles, uh, got everything put together. Seems to be running decent. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pop the body off. I'll run through a complete parts list of everything I've got in here. And then uh, we'll take it up a couple rocks here. This is all I've got at this location to work with. Um, so I may end the video there, but later this weekend, we'll take this somewhere with uh, more bigger obstacles and really put this thing through its paces and see what it's got. And then uh, we'll go from there. So first and foremost, still right now, got the stock body. Um, that is one thing that will be changing. Um, just waiting on delivery. So not really sure when that's going to show up, but got something pretty cool on the way for that. Now, this thing... Um, I could be going at this completely wrong, but like I said, I'm not a mini guy. So what I'm working with here, Enjora 1.3, they're modular wheels with the carbon face plate. Um, Enjora Klingon tires with the yellow super soft silicone inserts. I've got uh, brass high clearance links all the way around, including steering links, which I had to grind part of that tie rod down to make room for the uh, drag link servo horn junction. Um, the servo itself is uh, the torque servo torque brand servo i'm still running factory red cat shocks and frame and skid plate um i do have i think it said 11 percent underdrive uh, in the rear just portal gears just today i got uh New Enjora uh, drive shafts. I was having issues with the uh, factory plastic ones even before I went brushless. Uh, those universal joint areas, the ears on the drive shaft, very weak. Um, okay, so the motor situation is where most of the frustration came from 
Um, it's the Enjora Fat Viper motor that's on here. Um, I've seen many a video about these look awesome, especially for the money. Initially, I ordered the whole combo kit that came with the Fat Viper motor and Jora's brushless ESC. And that also came with a motor plate adapter. That was, I ordered it off of Amazon. It was coming from China, so it was going to be a couple weeks before it showed up. No biggie. Uh, about a week into it, I got back on, went to check the tracking to see where it was at in the process. Still hadn't shipped yet. And I knew something was wrong there because I've ordered that way for I don't know how long now. Click back on the uh, listing itself and it said that they were currently unavailable. Didn't have an expected refill day. Or whatever you want to call it. So I ordered it. Didn't get the order in on time apparently. So that was a problem. So I canceled that. I found the Enjora or Amazon. However you want to look at it. They had stock of the Fat Viper motor. And that was only going to be a few days to show up. So I ordered that. Um, the ESC, I think, was also unavailable at that point in time. So I did some looking around and I just, like I said, I don't know anything about these minis and micros. So I just went with the Fury Tech Lizard Light. Um, probably not the best option to do this but that's what was going to show up the quickest that's what i went with those show up um at that point still have the stock transmission tore everything apart and went to put this motor on there holes don't line up brain fart moment i knew the other one came with a motor plate adapter didn't think about it so frustrating yeah that one was on me <clears throat> get back on amazon start searching around can't find the motor plate by itself um that's weird get on enjora's website they're the manufacturer surely they'll have that motor plate to where you can buy it by itself uh, nope Searched all over the damn place. Cannot find anywhere that sells that motor plate adapter by itself. The only way that I have found that you can get that adapter or any adapter that I've seen has been in combos. Um, yeah, that was a real kick in the pants. I uh, don't quite understand how that's not uh, something that's available on its own. Seems like it would be a pretty common issue since there's not, or since there's apparently not a standard size bolt pattern like there is with tent scale stuff. Um, so, did some more looking around. What do you know? Enjora makes a transmission for the Red Cat Ascent, I figured, surely, their bolt pattern must line up. They make a transmission and a motor for the same truck. Should work. Neither the motor nor the transmission say anything about the bolt hole measurement. Whatever. Order the transmission. Wait for another five days or whatever. It shows up. Tear everything down, go to put it back together. Bolt holes don't line up. It's still got the stock uh, bolt pattern that the uh, original transmission had. 
So now I'm red in the face. Blood's boiling. I freaking hate minis. Shit like this is exactly why I have an issue with these, or at least one of the reasons why I have issues with these. You could build any 10 scale you want. Frankenstein that thing with parts from five different manufacturers. I promise you, you buy a 10th scale motor, you have a 10th scale transmission, motor plate, whatever. It's going to work without having to communicate, oh, this one's got this one, or this one's got this one. That communication would have been key. Um, if you can't tell, I'm still a little hyped up about it. I actually made a video the other day testing this thing out, and uh, it was still fresh at that point. So I ended up not even putting that thing up on here. If you see Camera's bouncing around a lot. I'm sorry. There's sweat bees and flies and all kinds of shit it's just attacking me. Anyways, long story short, um, can't get a motor plate adapter without buying the combo. Combo's unavailable. I've got enough stuff now. I could probably build two micros because of ordering the wrong stuff. So, I could either wait until something comes back in stock. I could go back and buy a whole nother round of everything. Or I could just very jankily make my own motor plate. That's what I did. Literally just a piece of aluminum spaced out on both sides of it actually to clear for bolt heads and whatnot had to do some clearancing on the inside of the transmission I had to waller some holes out i mean i i wrecked this transmission to get this thing in there um, you could not bolt a stock motor up to this thing if you wanted to anymore but it now has a aluminum transmission housing it's got all metal gears brushless motor and esc metal drive shafts should be good to go um i didn't have any small rubber bands laying around to uh make limiting straps which on my 10th scale rigs i am definitely a fan of I'm no professional when it comes to suspension geometry, so that's how I make up for it. All I had was these big fat things, and they don't have clips on the end of them, like my little mini bungee cords that I normally use for the tenth scales, so that's what I'm working with. It's ugly, but it should work. Um, currently, I'm running a ovonic i think it's a 500 milliamp hour 3s battery yeah we'll uh see what it can do the bar was set pretty low from uh right out of the box that's just my opinion i'm not a mini guy i have seen and heard nothing but good praises about these things from everybody and their brother who's got YouTube channels. Apparently this thing is supposed to be one of the best out of the box. It very well could be. I guess my standards are just different because I'm a 10th scale guy. I'm still really not getting the whole mini thing. But what I will say, how this thing handles right now, how... The trigger feel is the slow crawl, everything. It is a completely different truck than what it was a week ago. So there is still a little glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel here, as far as the minis go. I suppose if there was any, any truck that could redeem 
the whole situation, it, it would have to be this one. So, throw the body back on. We'll hit a couple of these uh, little sections around here that I had hit uh, last week. A couple spots that it didn't make. A few spots that it did make, but it was a battle. Blah, blah, blah. See how it does. And, uh, yeah, I'll either end the video there or... I'll hold off, wait until we find another location that's got some more challenging, bigger obstacles, and maybe I'll add them in here as well. If not, they'll be in a separate video. Pop the body back on, see what it does. Chances are if the truck is uh, jumpy at some point. The camera's probably twitching as well. That's me fighting off bugs. That right there is the control that I'm used to in the tent scale world. So the fact that I can go this slow with this little guy, that goes a long way with me. Okay, pause. I need to do some bug squatting. This is gonna be a rough video to make. These things are relentless. Definitely got some, uh, FOC action happening. And this thing is so much quieter now. Oh my goodness. These bugs. i tell you what. Okay, so it's still dropping out on that particular angle right there. It's not surprising, it gets pretty vertical. Before it would not crest the front tires on this particular line. It's not a problem there. It doesn't have the breakover angle to pull that right there though. I mean, I could bump it, but just the fact that it was staying stable going up that line, that's definitely a huge improvement. And not rolling over right there. Thing steady as a rock. Not bad. That little bind up that it had right there, that is exactly where I busted the drive shaft again last night. It didn't take much for that little stock drive shaft to pop. Definitely got a little offline right there. See if it can hold on to it. 
That is pretty extreme lean when it goes to drop off here. Oh, not too shabby. Oh, that was a pretty decent little pull. Now, I don't know about this one, though. Oh. Look at you go. That's some pretty good side hill action. Can you hold it? Can you hold it? Oh yeah. Oh my God. I don't know if you guys can see all these little sweat bees in the camera or not, but they are getting ridiculous. A little servo action. Things definitely uh, pretty stout for a forty dollar servo. I don't have much to uh, compare it to for the micro servos. I'm sure that there are lots of uh, stronger ones out there, but definitely uh, a little more of a budget kind of a guy see if they can hold it coming down this section here this is the same section where it wanted to uh, drop out the front end when it was moving the other direction oh yeah that was me. I went to swat a fly. Ooh. That was a bit much. Okay, these things are getting on my damn nerves. Just gonna set the camera down so I can swat these things away from me while I'm recording and not have to worry about flipping the camera around everywhere. So this was a spot that it didn't even come close to standing a chance at getting the other day. Let's see if it gets any closer today. There's a couple different angles to hit this from. We'll say there is one thing about the servo situation that I'm not digging, and I don't know 100% if it's the servo. It might be my remote. I'm not 100% sure, but it doesn't come all the way back to uh, center every time, especially from one direction. Um, I've taken the servo horn off, there's no binding in the, in the steering at all on the truck side of it. Um, took my remote apart yesterday and kind of cleaned everything out, make sure there wasn't any dust or some corrosion or something in there. Everything in there looks clean, so I'm fairly certain that it's the servo itself but I can't say for sure. Other than that, it's doing, uh, doing a great job in this truck. The 
the only other thing that I can see so far that may potentially become an issue is, uh, and I don't know if it's because I got so much brass on here. So I don't feel like I've got too much brass, but again, I don't know micros, but this uh, motor and ESC seems to be getting pretty hot for no harder than I'm running this thing. Now, it's not like burn your finger the instant you touch it hot, but it's hot enough to where I can say that it's getting hot. But again, I don't know. That maybe could be normal with these smaller scale stuff. It's a whole new world for me. I'm trying to learn. That almost had a pull there from that angle. I think I need to reset my endpoint on the, the steering. Get away from me. I feel like this thing should be turning sharper than what it is. I know I had to turn them down a good bit. Let's see if we can get a hook inside the notch there. Oh, it pulls that tire. That's what the problem is. I don't think we're going to get this one. Nope. So this here, not can't really count it as a climb because I've got to set it right there to start. I don't have an entrance up on this rock at the moment, but that's a pretty damn steep incline. It looks not near as bad on camera as what it does in person, but couldn't help myself. I got to set it on there and just see if it can climb up it the stability of this thing has greatly increased huh and i just now seen something so the other last night or whenever it was when uh, i busted the drive shaft on this thing uh i had brought it over here to take a picture and looky there, I found the drive shaft piece. <laughs> we'll collect that for really no good reason. But um, I do know, and I'll set it here next, but this area right here, um, I did do that last night with the other drive shafts and Afterwards, I got into the app on my phone where it turns into a level and tells you, you know, what degree of an incline you're at and all that good stuff. Uh, what was it? It was either 63 or 64 degrees um, for this next line I'm about to do. Doesn't do much. No way of proof. I don't have my second phone with me, but I can put a screenshot of what it, exactly what it was in here. Exactly where the truck is right now on this particular line is where I took that screenshot. So hopefully just adding those drive shafts, those metal drive shafts, uh, doesn't change the weight balance at all because it was right on the line of tipping. 
them climbing last night. It did climb it. Uh, it was a little bit of a battle, but it did end up making it. Oop. You can't get up on that ridge right there. Otherwise, it gets a few degrees steeper and it will kick you over backwards real quick. Got to kind of hug that little notch on the way up. It's not enough to be an edge to where you can really cling on to it and pull yourself up. But it's enough that if you just barely get the outside of your tire to push on it, not too much starts to climb up it it's a fairly grippy rock it's not super grippy but it's enough that these super soft tires stick pretty good on it there we go Slow down till your back tire gets over that little ridge it's trying to climb. I guess that might be a good opportunity to uh, get a little bit of a close up on the tires grabbing here. Oh, started looking at the camera got offline. I don't know if I can save it from here. There it is. It's almost worth uh, piling up a few rocks and making an entrance up onto that thing. That's a pretty gnarly climb for this little guy. So, final thoughts for this test run here. I'm pretty impressed. Not going to lie. Um, I figured this was going to end up just like every other mini that I had. And uh, this thing has gained enough stability and performance. Um I think I'll keep letting it frustrate me for a little while longer. I definitely want to get this thing somewhere with bigger and better obstacles, though. Um, there's not a whole lot here to really push it, uh, at least not without spending a whole afternoon building on a course that's not mine. So, I think uh, we'll try to finish this little line here, and I'll probably just go ahead and uh, call it for this video. Uh, I did far too much rambling in the beginning of this one to uh, drag it out anymore, so we'll just uh, make a whole new video whenever I get this thing somewhere with uh, more challenging obstacles. Not that there aren't spots here that are definitely challenging because there's a lot here that it can't do, but there's only so much I can do in a small area before I start getting antsy, I guess.
with everything I've done so far, I'm actually impressed. It, uh, it's doing very well. And I'm sure that I could take this thing to bigger and better capabilities, but I think I'm happy enough with it currently to uh, just run it for a while, get used to it, and see if this is something I want to continue on with. I'm definitely uh, enjoying the fact that I can slow crawl this thing. That's something I've not been able to do with any of the smaller scale stuff. Um, this is actually the first one that I've driven, period, that you could crawl like this. So, I'm happy. I never in a million years would have thought that I would be saying that, but I'm... Uh, I'm happy with it. Be interesting to see what happens. I've got a... Uh... Oh, God, these damn sweat bees are ridiculous here. Got a pretty sweet hard body on the way for it. Um, I posted up... Uh, couple little teasers here this week of uh, a metal die cast body that I've got but this thing is uh, performing well enough that oh my goodness I've got to get out of here uh, I'm not going to use that because it's it kills the performance a little bit too much um, I may end up getting another one to do a more scale type build with and I may end up putting that Mark Martin uh, lead sled body on that one. Really? You're going to make me look dumb right at the end? Come on now. But this 3D printed body I've got coming, it's uh, kind of a truggy style with a big old cow hood on it and it's uh the perfect uh body style ford truck that i like so that should be pretty cool um i know how much hard bodies change the dynamics of a tenth scale truck so it will be interesting to see um, if it makes it even worse because it's a smaller scale or if it'll handle it a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. These sweat bees and bugs are getting on my freaking nerves. So I'm going to cut this off here. We've already been going way longer than I planned. So, yeah. If uh, you want to be... One of the people that says, I told you so, these things are awesome. Go for it. You got me. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. You got any questions on what kind of dumbass shit I did to get to this point? Holler at me. I ain't hiding nothing from anybody. Aside from that, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one. See what this little bugger can do. Have a good one. Later.